Hi, this is uh, another game show, the second in our series, uh, and uh, it's called the Monty Hall Problem. Uh, this problem is very popular in the probability uh, uh, courses and community in general. This is a, something that has really shocked, puzzled, and troubled a lot of people. Very, very great people have uh, really been confused, if anything, uh, about this topic. So here is the situation. I'll explain first, and then I'll draw a picture. So let us say you're on a game show. Again, this one is a different type of game show. It's not really crucial. So the host shows you three doors. Okay, that shows you three doors. Okay. Now the doors are closed. Okay. Behind one door there is a car, and behind the other two doors there are goats. Okay. I'm going to make an assumption that you are interested in the car. Okay. That's a reasonable assumption. Uh, at least today, uh, cars are way more expensive than goats. Okay. Uh, so let's, and we don't know. So you don't know what's behind uh, uh, each door because the doors are closed and you're asked to select a door. So there's a car behind one, there are goats behind the other two doors. Okay. Goat, goat. Okay. So that's the situation right now. So, but we don't know behind which door there's a car, behind which other two doors there are goats. Now, the game show host knows what's behind each door. That's an important thing to know. Okay. So, like I said, behind one door there's a car, behind the other two there are goats, and the game show knows, show host knows that, knows which is what's behind what. Okay. So, you select one of the closed doors. Okay. So. Let us say, for example, you select door number. So let's say you pick this. So you select this. Okay, you pick the second door. As an example, you could have picked the first or the third. Now, the game show host, like I said, knows what's behind and picks one of these two, either this or this, and opens it. So it opens the door and reveals a goat. Okay, so the person knows what's behind each door. And the person has a choice, okay, and decides to open one of those doors. For sure, one of the doors has a goat. He opens the door and reveals the goat. All right. Now the game show host points to the door that has not been opened and that's not been selected. Remember, you picked the middle door. The game show host opened the door on the right. Now the game show host asks you the question: Do you want to stick? to your door, original choice, the middle door, or switch to the door to the right. So this is what you would switch to. Or, you know, uh, so essentially, I'm sorry, he wants to ask you that question. Do you want to switch or do you want to stick? That's his only choice. However, from your standpoint, you really are looking at one of three situations. You either decide to switch or you decide to stick to your door or you could be indifferent. What I mean by that is, you know, you're thinking, okay, 50-50, flip a coin. If I get heads, I'll switch. If I get tails, I'll stick, something like that. But you only have, you have to make that decision. So this is where the decision comes. What should you decide? Should you decide to switch? Should you decide to stick with the original door? Or should you flip a coin? Okay. What would you do? Turn off or, you know, uh, pause the video. Think about it. Think about it. Give it a nice thought and say what you would do. We will give you the answer in the next slide. So I want you to think about the answer before we move on. So one more time, you, are, you have three doors. Behind one door, there's a goat. Behind another door, there's a goat. Behind the third door, there's a car. But they could be shuffled in any which way possible. You select one door, whichever it is. One of the other two doors does not have a car for sure. The game show host who knows what's behind each door opens the, the, one of those doors, reveals a goat, and asks you the question, do you want to switch or do you want to stick with your original choice? What would you do? All right. So let's look at the solution. Now this, like I said, has really puzzled a lot of people. If you said you are going to be indifferent because you think there's a 50-50 chance that it's going to be in one of the unopened doors, either the one you picked or the one you did not pick, then you are in the majority. That means this is what most people do. When I teach a class uh, and I ask this question, 
I would say about 80, 90 percent of the students would say 50-50. Uh, okay. I would say it is even larger uh, if they have never heard this problem. Okay. Uh, but, but you know those of them that have heard of this problem would know what to answer. Okay. Now, turns out that is not true. Turns out it is not true that it is 50-50. In fact, if you switch you have a two-thirds chance of winning. Okay. Now, this would be surprising to a lot of people. One way to solve the problem is to do the law of total probability. Remember we touched upon the law of total probability. One way to solve this problem is to take the route of the law of total probability, compute the probabilities and then find out what is the probability that uh, there will be a car behind the other door. Okay. You could actually compute that, you have a conditional probability and, and so on. That is one way to do this. Second way is a somewhat intuitive solution. So, like we did in the previous slide, let us say you picked door 2 initially, that is why it is in red. Okay. You could have one of three scenarios. Scenario A is where the car is in door 1, scenario B is where the car is in door 2, scenario C is where the car is in door 3. What will the host do in scenario 1? The host will open door 3 uh, because uh, that was the one that has a goat, door 1 has a car. In the second scenario, scenario B, the car is in door 2, so the host could open either door 1 or door 3. And in the third uh, scenario, in scenario 3, for sure the game show host will open door 1, that is because that is the one that has a goat, the show ho game show host will not open the third door. Now, if you switch, what is going to happen? In the first case, if you switched, so they will open door 3, so this is revealed. Here they would open either, let us well, let's just say you open door 3, here they open this. If you look at it, you switch, you win. You switch, you lose here. You switch, you win. So, 2 out of 3 times you switch and win. Therefore, the probability of winning by switching is 2 thirds. Okay. Notice that in the second choice there, there is, it could either be 1 or 3, but it does not matter. The game show host arbitrarily picks one of them. Okay. Now, also notice that the three scenarios are equally likely with probability one thirds, and therefore, uh, you know, the probability of winning by switching is two thirds. Now, I want to make a few comments. Okay, whenever I talk about this in my classes, students are typically not convinced of the results. They usually need another weekend or something like that to think about the problem. Please do that. Okay. The first time I, I, I taught this material, I had a student who actually walked out of the classroom, went ahead and wrote a program in MATLAB or Octave, and actually simulated this situation. And, and uh, his simulation, his name was Adam, uh, and uh, his simulation uh, was such that you know he could clearly show that there is a two-thirds chance of winning. He was not convinced, and in fact, he walked out of class. This is the only time something like that has happened to me. Now. The important part of this is that the game show host knows what is behind each door. The game show host does not randomly just open one of the doors. Okay? The person knows what is behind each door. Now, for some people it might help to think of it in the following way. Think of the special case of 3000 doors okay? and 2,999, I mean 99 of them have goats and one has a car. Okay? And when you pick one door and the game show host opens 2998 of them leaving one door closed, would you pick that one door just because that is the one that the person did not? Turns out that if you did that there is a very good chance of you actually getting the car. So, if that is something that helps go ahead and do that. Um, if you are still not convinced like I said you know uh, you can do the conditional probability argument mathematically and use law of total probability and derive the result. So, there are many ways where you can write a use a computer program and simulate what is going on and actually show this computation. It is a fun exercise, I would highly recommend that. Finally, uh, there is a nice Wikipedia page on this. This is called the Monty Hall problem. Go ahead and see that. There is a very nice uh, 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 you know, justification for, for the result. I would encourage you to go and take a look at this. Now, turns out this is an interesting comment that I do want to make turns out that sometimes I do have people who know well and good that there is a two-third chance of switching and winning, but still they will not switch. Okay? See, think about this. If you stuck with your original door, you only have a one-third chance of winning. Okay? But if you switch, you have a two-third chance. Still, I know of people who tell me that I will still stick with my door. 
The reason is very fascinating to me. Uh, it is uh, psychologically extremely an amazing result. They say that, well, if I were to switch, okay, I would be perceived as inordinately greedy. Even though I have a two-thirds chance of winning, I would be perceived as someone who is extremely greedy. And this, and then after that, if I don't win, there is a one-third chance of losing. Losing due to greed is something that I cannot take. So I would regret for the rest of my life and therefore instead of going with my gut feel and picking my first choice, even though my probability of choosing the second one is switching, gives me a better option, I would not pick that. There are many people who think about that and that's a phenomenon called regret has been studied really well in the psychology literature and the decision making uh, in, for, in, in the psychology side of things. So this is another aspect that we are not talking about. We are saying people are going to be purely rational decision makers and there are other issues where you know humans are going to behave somewhat irrationally in situations like this. Thank you.